Hi everyone, my name is Betty and I am here to help you see your space through the lens of feng shui so you can make the best decision on how you interact with your space. In today's video, I am going to talk about five areas that will enhance your home office. And if you are back at the office, I will also point out three things that you can apply at work without making it glaringly obvious that you feng shui your space. The first thing that I consider when I feng shui a home office is to select the appropriate room first. In classical feng shui, that means understanding the energetic blueprint of your space before designating any one room as the office. What typically happens when you first move in is you will likely designate the largest room as the master bed, the second largest as the kids room, and the smallest room as the home office. However, that is not the right approach if you really want to harness the energy of the space to help you thrive. So step one should really be to understand the energetic blueprint of your floor plan. From there, we will select the room that supports wealth and career progression. This is why understanding the energetic blueprint is so important because you want the energy of the space to support the activity that you will undertake in that space. So if you use this room as the kids room, for example, then the wealth energy is wasted on children that are not working. Now let's assume that the location of the office is decided. Then we can talk about some of the design features like desk placement. If you know a little bit about feng shui, then you might have heard that sitting in the command position is the best. In my feng shui mitts video, I went into detail on why that is not always correct. But since we are talking about the office, let me share some desk positions and why the best position varies by your layout. This first example has the desk in the command position with full visibility to the door. However, there is a protruding closet directly in front of your desk where you are essentially facing a wall blade. A wall blade redirects Sa Chi towards you while you are working at your desk. So it is best to avoid this position. You can also add a piece of furniture to be flush against this wall to eliminate the wall blade. Or you can move your desk to face a different direction. This next example shows an overhead beam, which you should absolutely avoid. Beams create added pressure and stress over the long term. This means neither you nor your desk should be directly under the beam. So in this case, you can move your desk away from the beam and still be in the command position. Or if the beam is in the middle, then you have two options that are not the command position, but puts you away from the overhead beam, in which case option B and C are better choices than option A. Sitting at the corner desk is the exact opposite of being in the command position. However, the corner desk can come in handy from a classical feng shui perspective. Each property has its own good and bad direction, and if the good direction of your property happens to be in diagonal, then a corner desk can help you tap into that energy. Otherwise, corner desk can be a little bit risky, especially if you have an overhead beam along the side. Some well-thought-out floor plans might have a clever nook in the kitchen or somewhere off to the side that is perfect for a tiny desk. This is practically perfect because the architect and developers designed it to be so. But it is not always designed with the command position in mind. However, we cannot automatically rule out this nook as bad simply because it does not put you in the command position. From a classical feng shui perspective, the area where the nook is located may have very auspicious energy, in which case you will likely find yourself feeling more inspired and productive while seated here. So all of these examples are to illustrate that depending on the layout of your space, the command position may not be the best position for your desk. Between the command position and classical feng shui, you always have a 50-50 chance of it being a good desk position. Earlier, I alluded to the power of the facing direction through the corner desk. In classical feng shui, we have to first find the best room for your office then we go as in-depth as figuring out the exact angle that your desk should face in order to tap into the most auspicious energy for your financial and career growth. 
One way to do this is to follow the annual flying star chart, which will tell you the good and the bad directions for that year. At a very high level, the number 5 star represents obstacles and disastrous circumstances. The number 7 star represents robbery of wealth and robbery of opportunities. As a rule of thumb, you should always avoid facing the direction that these two stars land on each year. Desks come in many shapes and forms. They include the standard rectangular desk, the corner desk, L-shape, and kidney-shaped desk. You might have heard some feng shui consultants arguing that round or curved shape are preferred over rectangular or triangular desk. This is due to the sharp corners in the rectangular and triangular desk. However, this is generally not an issue because desks are not typically arranged in such a way that the sharp angles are pointing towards you. In a large co-working space, for example, the desks are typically arranged in alignment with each other and facing the same direction. So it is unlikely that you will be harmed by the sharp corner of the desk. A kidney-shaped desk is deemed by most as the most ideal desk because of the round curves and it hugs you on both sides. But in my opinion, the ideal desk is the L-shaped desk. Earlier, I talked about avoiding the direction where the number 5 star or the number 7 star resides each year. With an L-shaped desk, you have the option of facing three directions without having to move or rewire your entire setup. There is no such thing as perfect feng shui, but setting you up with options and convenience makes it easier for you to tap into the benefit of feng shui. You might have seen this feng shui ba gua before, and you might have even gone ahead and applied the ba gua to your desk. It looks something like this. The southwest is for wealth and prosperity, so you put a plant here to represent the wood element. The south represents fame and reputation, so you put a light here to represent the fire element. And the southeast represents relationship, so you put a rose quartz crystal as the earth element. Then you have a picture with your children in the east for family, a metal pen holder in the west for joy and creativity, books in your knowledge corner, and a journal in your mentor and travel area. And finally, your computer in the career and opportunity area. And if you have done all of that, you can go ahead and clear out your desk because all of that was unnecessary. Again, I went into detail debunking this misconception in my feng shui myths video. So make sure you check out that video to learn more. The decor of your desk and the office should really be dictated by the energetic blueprint of your property. For example, let's say that your office is in a very auspicious room. Then we can determine what element you will need to enhance the auspiciousness further. If you need the earth element, then you can add more earth tone colors, crystals, ceramics, or a rock collection in your office. If it is metal that you need, then you can add metal decorations, even dumbbells, or gray or metallic colors in the office. The bottom line is, each space requires something different, and we cannot use this bakwa as a one-size-fits-all solution. If you're back at the office, you likely didn't get to pick where your desk is located, so applying feng shui at the office is a bit more challenging. In an open concept office, if you are seated near a pillar, then it can create a wall blade. In this case, try to position your seat away as much as possible. The same applies to an overhead beam. In particular, if you are leading a call or giving a presentation, try not to stand under the beam as it can disrupt your thought process. If you have your own cubicle, then you potentially have more space to work with. If your cubicle is semi-enclosed, then you can shift your desk around each year to avoid the inauspicious direction without impacting others too much. If you don't have the option to move your desk, and you're facing a negative direction, then you can consider working from the kitchen or the lounge area more often. Even though you cannot avoid working at your desk entirely, it helps to just reduce your exposure. The next thing you can do to tap into the auspicious direction each year is to orient yourself with the four directions inside the building. Then, memorize the bad directions each year and avoid sitting facing those directions while in a meeting with others 
or when you are negotiating with clients. My last tip is not related to feng shui specifically, but it is part of Chinese metaphysics, and that is day selection. In day selection, each day has a ruling officer that governs the energy of the day, which dictates the type of activity that are most supported on that day. So if you are organizing a client pitch meeting, then it will be beneficial to tap into a success day as opposed to a danger day. By aligning your business planning with the energy of the day, you are working with universal timing. The goal of day selection is to help you start off with the most auspicious energy to carry into your project. It does not guarantee that it will be void of any obstacles, only that when trouble arises, you can resolve it in the most beneficial way possible. If you are interested in getting your own day selection calendar, you can reference the link in the description below. I hope you enjoyed this video and gained a new perspective about your office. If you like to apply proper feng shui to your office, you can check out my program in the description below.